Tonight on Sightings, has this team of investigators captured proof of UFOs on videotape? I'm a pure skeptic, and to see what I just saw, I can't be skeptical. Do the latest cases of abduction reveal frightening alien motives? Women begin to experience the gynecological examinations done by the aliens on them. And could our own astronauts face deadly close encounters with alien forces? Something is out there. And what it, what it is, I don't know. At that point, it started to appear. They had large, dark eyes, claw-like hands. I began sensing and knowing and feeling. I do believe in life after death. I mean, I've been there. We have not scratched the surface of what the mind can do. It's a connection with the unknown. Hello, I'm Tim White. Tonight on Sightings, people who claim to have had personal contact with aliens. They tell bizarre stories of abduction, and they suggest their captors have sinister motives. Most UFO encounters are easily debunked by experts, but there are still many sightings that cannot be explained, even by the most skeptical researchers. UFOs, they've been sighted in every corner of the Earth. Witnesses have captured strange lights and disc-shaped objects on film and video, but even before the age of technology, people worldwide were reporting UFOs. The UFO subject goes back at least six to 8,000 years in human history. People have many times pointed to the Christian Bible and the old uh, first five books of the Jewish Torah as being examples throughout history of UFO contacts. But what we're seeing today is considered by many to be examples of superior technology from somewhere else, probably another planet. Some places have become legendary as UFO hotspots. Gulf Breeze, Florida, Roswell, New Mexico. Sightings in these out-of-the-way locations number in the thousands. The next hotspot? According to world-renowned UFO researcher Peter Gutilla, this town, Anza, California, has all the earmarks of an extraterrestrial mecca. And we have animal mutilations, we have abductions, we have close encounters of all degrees. Um, we've had the appearance of mysterious animals, um, and we've even had some uh, of the so-called men in black experiences there. At a local coffee shop, people were willing to share bizarre stories of their UFO encounters. Kind of, I mean, that's yeah. the feeling I get like yeah. They've revealed that they believe that the men in black are actually extraterrestrials sighted in deserted areas near the town. Each story is stranger than the last. And I happened to look through the trees, and I saw this vehicle standing about, just still, just about 60 feet off of the ground. It's like a flying saucer. It had a dome on the top and a platform around, and a couple of persons walked around walking on air. I was delighted to be able to see such a thing. And then all of a sudden, it was gone. Anza is a UFO researcher's dream, a living laboratory filled with eyewitnesses. They moved, I first saw them over here, they moved across. This thing was so bright, there was absolutely no shadows whatsoever on the ground. It was like a gold trail, it left a gold trail. Gotilla believes an around-the-clock surveillance here could net scientific proof of UFO activity, activity reported today and possibly in the ancient past when Indians here drew astronaut-like figures. Because of so much activity, the time was right. A team of UFO experts and skeptics move into the area. This will be one of the largest UFO stakeouts ever. They set up a command post on Thomas Mountain. No one that I know of has gone out there to do what we did. We had the radar. This radar can detect objects within a 24-mile radius. This was pretty elaborate. The equipment was very expensive and very good and, and uh, very accurate. The Starlight camera is so sensitive, it can photograph objects in total darkness. Once online, it sees anything that gives off even the slightest light. It easily picks up stars that are not visible with a regular video camera. 
This camera is unique because it has an intensifier, which is more than a thousand times more sensitive than the video camera you have in your home. Surveying the area, the researchers are looking for a UFO the locals have nicknamed Goldie, a golden glowing craft seen over and over in the night sky from this mountaintop. In starlight, we're looking at Mount Kawea. This is where Goldie, or the UFO, which has been seen about 50 times in the past three or four years, uh, usually appears. It appears in this area. It has been seen actually all across Mount Kawea. This is Mount Kawea here. The team gathers data and keeps meticulous notes. They continually monitor the sky. Then, unexpectedly, they're visited by witnesses. Debbie Steinberg didn't want to talk about her experience in town. She hiked to the stakeout area for a private meeting with researchers. This was about 10.30 at night that it started. And I closed my eyes, and when I opened them again, I found myself in a room, and I was laying on a table, and I had six beings, and I couldn't tell you what they were doing, because I, I really don't know. But I remember the one that was on the left of my head took something from my head. Researchers at the stakeout say that Debbie's story fits the classic pattern of what is known as a UFO abduction experience. I believe that, uh, that the abduction phenomenon is real, that it is extraterrestrial, that people are basically describing events that are happening to them uh, in a, with an objective reality. Dr. Jacobs has investigated UFO abductions in his bestseller, Secret Life. Usually, the abduction phenomenon begins in childhood and goes all the way through old age. And so they've had a series of experiences throughout their life. This is a rendition of uh, the craft I saw when I was four and my brother was three, and where I was zapped with light. This is a drawing of the what I call the silhouettes. I'm very afraid of this rod this one carries. The eye is long, mm -hmm. long and thin and, and very black. There was some eye contact, but it was like you and I are making eye contact right now. Uh -huh. It's not that we're looking at each other's eyes, but we're more like reading each other's minds. Mm -hmm. That's more like what it was. I'm a hypnotherapist. I am now specializing in UFO abduction cases. Yvonne Smith heads an abduction support group where people can share their experiences and discuss their feelings. I was six years old and I lived in um, Georgia, near Macon, Georgia. And I just remember it was in the middle of the night and I woke up and I was staring at the side of the head of the being. And I started to panic, and the, a couple of the beings in the craft subdued me somehow. And they had a very large instrument that came over my head, and they showed me a little BB-looking thing. And they um, told me they were going to put it up my nose. But then this instrument came over my head and, and punctured the um, soft palate of my mouth, and it hurt very bad. And the next thing I knew, I was being placed back in my bedroom. I'm finding in my cases many chilling similarities. The person is taken against their will, taken into a craft of some kind, put on a table. The women begin to experience the gynecological examinations done by the aliens on them. They feel very violated with the men Anal probes are inserted and sperm is taken. It's all done against their will and they're really helpless to do anything about it. Coming up, the abducted relive more terrifying experiences through hypnotic therapy. During some abductions, I'm aware of them, of their taking sperm samples. And later, our UFO investigation in Anza, California continues. Regression therapy is an extremely controversial method in which abductees relive their UFO encounters under hypnosis. Some scientists suggest that what they're actually reliving might be repressed emotional trauma or subconscious fears from childhood. But for the abductee, the alien encounter is very real. In abduction cases, many times 
the person will remember consciously that something strange or bizarre happened to them, something out of the ordinary. They desire to go into hypnosis to retrieve the hidden memories. During some abductions, I'm aware of them, of their taking sperm samples in many different ways. They've done it in many different ways. Um, with tubes, with um, like catheters. Um, there's one way I have not been able to deal with emotionally or under regression. And that's one where there's a being on top of me. And I can't deal with that yet. Under hypnosis, Jesse Long is reliving trauma that he believes is caused by his abduction experience. Ah! As incredible as it sounds, these people are actually reliving these terrifying experiences. Long claims to have not only emotional scars, but real physical scars as well. Even more disturbing are stories from women who believe they were abducted for breeding purposes. As incredible as this may sound, we have come across in the research uh, cases having to do with missing fetuses. I remember they numbed me from the waist down and they took something that looked like um, uh, an umbilical cord attached to placenta and they levitated it into some kind of chamber. Later abduction um, scenarios, she is actually shown a baby. Now this baby is not like a human baby that, as we know it, it's a cross between an alien and a human. Uh, it's the central question of UFO research today. Why are they manufacturing these offspring, these babies? If we knew the answer to that, I think we would have a large part of the UFO mystery finally in hand. Not every reported encounter with an alien is frightening and traumatic. Some people who claim contact with extraterrestrials tell us that for them, the encounter was a peaceful communication. That was certainly the case for Dorothy Izad of Vancouver, British Columbia. I went over to the window, looked out, and there was this enormous thing up in the sky. It was in the shape of a diamond. And as I watched it, like there was a whole group of little like silver dollars that came out of the large ship. Dorothy and her family reported that UFOs appeared every night. I've been with her, I've seen these things. We all went down and we saw the phenomena, you know, flying in formation, you know, streaking across the sky, this sort of thing. She tells me what they are, but I'll never be convinced until they drag me screaming and kicking in one of their ships. And I'm afraid that's my nature and that's where it'll stay. I found that through the test that uh, this person is telling the truth, whatever she's doing, and that she's honest, and she's a very average, normal individual. This is what witnesses have seen. These are not street lights, airplanes, or other conventional lights. This is actual footage of unidentified flying objects. This is a single frame of Dorothy's film, equivalent to 1 18th of a second. The streaks do not appear on the frame before or after this one, suggesting that the light is moving great distances in an 18th of a second. We looked up into the sky, Dorothy too, and she went to the window and she looked up and she said, oh, come on, do something for my friends. They've been here for so long. And right away, three shafts of light, as bright as anything, just shot right up into the air where we were watching. My communications with the light beings are that they're very worried about us humans because we usually do things without thinking. The weapons we build, the way we raping the earth without thinking of the consequences. Although it does not appear that this film has been altered, skeptics believe these images are the result of light phenomena emanating from Earth, not UFOs. But Dorothy believes these lights are alien spacecraft and that she can communicate with the creatures inside. 
Coming up, what caused an unmanned Soviet probe to be knocked out of Martian orbit? This is something that most likely destroyed the Phobos 2 mission to Mars. And it can do it again. And our hunt for UFOs in the Southern California desert continues. The greatest challenge for a serious UFO researcher is finding hard evidence. Film and videotape are easily faked, and skeptics distrust first-person accounts. The team we followed into the California desert made every effort to maintain a scientifically valid investigation. All kinds of state-of-the-art technology continue to arrive at the surveillance site. Now this radar works like any other radar. It's a precision piece of equipment which utilizes radio waves which are bounced off a given target to determine its relative size, speed, and location. And that's how it communicates. Theoretically, radar signals could also be picked up by an alien craft. Another signaling device is this laser. This high-powered laser acts as a beacon, but researchers also fear it could be interpreted by approaching craft as a hostile act. On this laser here, you would probably be able to see it reflect off a surface approximately two to three miles away, although the laser beam does continue on to infinity. So if I was to shine the laser straight up, it would continue on uh, beyond the Earth's atmosphere and continue on forever. Most UFO research is privately funded, but the U.S. government is now launching its own search for extraterrestrial intelligence with a NASA program known as SETI. SETI stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and it's a, an effort by NASA and a fair number of astronomers to look for life in the galaxy. We're going to turn the world's largest telescopes toward the heavens with the idea of looking for some signs that we're not alone in the universe. The idea is to listen for radio signals that might be deliberately or perhaps even accidentally transmitted by other civilizations. Any signals from space will be analyzed by a sophisticated computer system to determine if an alien life form is trying to communicate with us. It's been said that in the first uh, 30 seconds of this new NASA experiment, we'll collect more data than all the experiments of this type that have, have collected in the last 30 years. So that's a big step forward. While the U.S. looks for proof of alien spacecraft, the Russians believe they already have proof. In 1988, the Soviet Union launched two unmanned probes to explore Mars and the space around the planet. Phobos II achieved Mars orbit in January of 1989. However, something then occurred which there is apparently no prosaic explanation for. According to the Russians, they encountered with their unmanned craft an anomalous object or a UFO which was computed out to 25 kilometers. What we have is an infrared photograph taken from the Phobos 2 probe. This is the Martian moon Phobos. This is the UFO that apparently the Phobos 2 craft encountered. What happened was the craft observed the UFO. It took some photographs of it. Then, according to Soviet sources, this UFO turned toward the Phobos craft. The Russians then lost contact with it, and the craft has been gone ever since. I think it took out Phobos 2 mission because Phobos 2 saw something it was not supposed to have seen. If I were in a spacecraft now to Mars, especially to Phobos, I would feel terrified because in my opinion, based on the knowledge that I have, something is out there. And what it, what it is, I don't know. But this is something that most likely destroyed the Phobos 2 mission to Mars. And it can do it again. Coming up the startling results of our UFO investigation. And I'm totally freaked out. I mean, I've got shivers going all the way up my spine. From the outset of their investigation in Anza, California, the research team realized that the chances of capturing a UFO on film were extremely remote. But even with a skeptical eye to the skies, the team made a startling discovery. Maintaining the surveillance equipment and recording data has been a full-time job for researchers. Two days and nights of hard work finally pay off. After day-long preparations, a strange light appears in the sky. The camera was not in position, but skeptical observers were. And I'm totally freaked out. I mean, I've got shivers going all the way up my spine. I, I don't know how to explain this. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a pure skeptic, definitely. And to see, to see what I just saw, there's, you know, 
I'm st I, I, I can't be skeptical. Uh, we saw a yellowish orange light appear over the mountain. It traveled uh, a little bit to our right and split off into two lights. And as we watched them, they began to fade in intensity. And after about 30 to 40 seconds, they disappeared from view. The sighting lasted only 15 seconds, but soon another UFO appeared, and this time the cameras were ready. The team captured this amazing UFO video. You guys watching this inside? It's going out, right. going straight out. Go, go, go. 249, 249. We are, are presently watching this light, anomalous light, doing, it's now rising above Mount Cahuilla. It appears to be more oblong or saucer shaped than a conventional aircraft would be. This starlight videotape may be all we ever know about the UFO nicknamed Goldie. Neither US military sources nor the FAA have a definitive explanation. Researchers in ANZA now have extensive logs and video, but none of it can yet explain who or what is out there. With so many sightings and contacts reported, even the US government is now taking notice. NASA will spend $100 million over the next 10 years to scientifically search for intelligent life in the universe. One wonders if this mission will show that spaceships and extraterrestrials are more than science fiction. For Sightings, I'm Tim White.